Intel's 3900K, the fastest CPU for Star Citizen. However, nobody uses it. Max out. This will be an interesting video because I'm going to show you how and why the 3900K beats every X3D CPU in Star Citizen and why 3.19 and future Star Citizen patches will love this CPU. But first of all, let's address the biggest misconception about CPUs. RAM speed does not matter. Yikes. If you believe this, then you also probably believe that AMD CPUs with X3D cache are faster than any Intel CPU. If you believe this, then don't watch this video. Let's take a look at the facts. These are the results of the tuned 1300K with 8200 MHz in the memory speed of the RAM, up against my own 7800 X3D that has also tuned memory of 6400 MHz. These results are up against 10 pounds 42's stock systems that are not tuned and are just running XMP or Expo. For the full specs, see the description below. As you can see, memory speed does matter. Each of the results did exactly the same Lorville run that 10 pound 42 does. In addition, we're doing five runs and these are the average results. Notably, you can see that the Intel system has almost 40 FPS on the 1% low. And when you compare that against the 7950X, when the Vcache CCD is only enabled, which is the most optimum settings, then the tuned Intel system is 33% faster in the 1% lows. Meanwhile, it's 25% faster on the average. This is why the only thing unoptimized is your PC. It's only when the 7800X3 system that I own that is tuned, it's when, almost catching up with the Intel system. The reason why is because number one, Lorville is the most demanding city in Star Citizen. And what this means is that a lot of the logic is actually not hitting the cache. It's hitting the RAM. Let's dig deeper into that. This is the 7800X3D. It's an eight core, 16 thread CPU with a base clock of 4.2 gigahertz with a boost clock up to five gigahertz. This is the 3900K. It has eight performance cores with hyper threading and 16 e course total length of 32 threads. The base clock is 3 gigahertz with a boost clock up to 5.8 gigahertz. Meanwhile, the IPC, which stands for instructions per clock, is the same. What this means is that when the CPUs are clocked at the same frequency, they should perform exactly the same. So for example, if they both clock at 5 gigahertz, they should in theory perform the same. But as we know, in reality, they don't. This is where cache and memory comes in. These are the only other metrics that impacts the CPU's performance. As the CPU needs to access the logic on the memory to compute, the only thing that matters here now is how fast it can access it, but also how much it can access at any given time. This is why people are so excited about the 3D cache on the Ryzen processors who are labeled X3D. Looking at both CPU's cache architecture, the AMD system has 512 kilobytes in Intel has 2.1 megabyte, L2 cache on the AMD system is 8 megabytes, and on the Intel system it is 32 megabytes. Meanwhile, the L3 cache is 96 megabytes on the AMD X3D system. Meanwhile, on Intel it has 36 megabytes of quote unquote smart cache shared with its e cores. But what does all of this mean? Using ADA64, we can see the bandwidth speed and the latency of the caches just mentioned. This tells you how quickly and how much in gigabytes per second the CPUs can access each relevant cache. But the ADA64 results does not give you the complete picture because it only shows you the speed and bandwidth. Using Microbench cache and memory test, we can actually see everything within the context of the cache sizes. What you're seeing here is the latency of the AMD system moving across each cache level all the way up to the memory, the RAM. And what you see here is the Intel system. When we overlay both data, you're seeing exactly when the data spills over to the L2 cache and L3 cache and also spills over to the memory when the data size increases. What you're seeing here is the L3 cache benefit of the 3D cache of the AMD system. Over, over 60 megabytes more of data 
can be taken advantage by the 7800X3D system and as such gives it a massive performance benefit when the logic that needs to be executed exists in this space. However, due to Star Citizen's being such a next generational game, a lot of the data spills into the memory and as such gets limited by the memory's maximum theoretical performance. And this is where Intel excels. Looking at Ada64, the performance is almost double in the bandwidth, meanwhile the latency is roughly 10 to 15% lower on the Intel system. This is where the Intel system gets its 10 to 15% performance advantage over the 7800X3D when the memory is fully tuned. With this information, let's take a look at how the 1300K and the 7800X3D fully tuned compares in other areas in Star Citizen. Beginning with our own run of Lorville using very high settings, we can see that, well, once again, the 1300K beats the 7800X3D. I'm also including results from 3.18 just to show you how the Lorville landscape has increased the demand for the memory to be performant. They're both seeing a massive dip roughly 30% on the average. However, the 3900K, just because it has faster memory and higher clock speed, is able to outperform the 7800X3D. Moving to Area 18, which introduced volumetric clouds, we can see that the net performance for both CPUs has gone down from patch 3.18 to 3.19. However, once again, the Intel is edging on on the 1% low. Moving to Orison, we can see that the performance has actually increased. I think this is due to the overall engine optimization for the volumetric cloud and now we're seeing actually better performance for both systems. And I wanted to add the quantum travel as well as an extra benchmark. Once you have two new system, there isn't really much difference between the 3900K and the 7800X. The key takeaway from the benchmarks is that Star Citizen will become more and more demanding and as such, the cache will not be big enough to store all the logic. And this will become more and more common as Star Citizen's engine switch on all the new features such as quanta, physicalized damage, resource management, management, ray tracing, simulating the propagation of fire in a spaceship, and so much more. Even though Star Citizen becomes more and more demanding, they will also offset the performance losses with new performance optimizations such as the upcoming Vulcan and other performance optimizations Star Citizen's developers are implementing. However, there is no way to overcome the physical limitations of any PC. As such, RAM bandwidth and latency will always be king, doesn't matter if it's from an Intel system or an AMD system, with or without 3D cache. This is why nobody is prioritizing the 3900K over the 7800X3D, even though it beats the X3D by 30% when the X3D is running stock RAM settings, and beats a fully tuned one by roughly 10% and completely destroys it on the 1% low. And this is why I say the only thing unoptimized is your PC. If you want to see how a fully tuned DDR4 compares to fully tuned DDR5 with the 3900K, then please click here. And I'll see you in the next one.